Hi guys, welcome in another video. In this video I will be installing a face vise on my workbench. We'll make the wooden front shawl, turn the handle on the lathe, and even drill some bench duck holes. So let's get started. So this is the workbench I made about two years ago. It's made from Douglas wood and I made it during the renovation of our house. So at that time I had a lot of other stuff going on and I just never seemed to get the time or the budget to install a decent face vise on this bench. I did once restore this metal vise that came from my grandfather, but now for woodworking I bought this HV516 face vise, which is a very solid build. It has the 28 by 5 spindle tread on it and also cast iron parts. So the first question is, on what side of the bench do you actually want to install the vise? In general, if you're left-handed, you want to put it on the right side, and if you're right-handed, you want to put it on the left side. This makes it the most ergonomic to work with. And in my case, I also had to move it about 2 inch from the side, so the iron backplate didn't collide with the inner structure of my bench. Next, you'll need to decide how low you want to install the vise below the work surface. So let's call this distance, distance B. The optimum distance B for this vise is 65mm or 2.55 inch. This is a drawing I made to explain the use of a spacer block. As you can see, my bench top is made up out of two layers of plywood. So in this case, I need to fill out the space between the underside of the plywood and the cast iron base plate. To calculate the thickness of the spacer, you take your distance B, in my case 65mm, you subtract the thickness of the bench top, in my case 36mm, you subtract the thickness of the cast iron base plate, which for the HV516 is exactly 11.5mm, and that'll give you a spacer of 17.5mm. So now that we know where to put the vise, we can start making the front jaw. So it is recommended to use hardwood for the front jaw, like maple or beech, However, the 2 inch thick piece of beech wood I had saved for this purpose had developed a large crack and I was no longer able to get the 15 cm or about 20 inch jaw out of it, which is the optimum size for this vise. So I decided to use a piece of Douglas, as the whole bench was made out of Douglas anyway, but because this is a softer wood, I added a piece of plywood on the back side to make it a bit more durable. I also made this drawing to help you mark the locations of the holes. For those of you who prefer the imperial system, I added those as well in blue. You can pause the screen as you wish. After marking the holes on the front jaw, I pre-drilled them carefully with a 3mm drill bit. I heavily recommend using a drill press for this, as those holes need to be very exact and square to the surface. Next, I clamped the front jaw in position on the workbench and guided a long 3mm drill bit through the holes to mark them onto the bench. After that I unclamped the front jaw again from the bench and brought it back to the drill press, where a Forstner bit followed the path of the pre-drilled holes. That same Forstner bit was then mounted in my cordless drill driver and again followed the path of the pre-drilled holes but this time in the workbench. Take your time to drill these by hand as they need to be squared to the surface. I used a 45 degree chamfer bit on my router to get rid of the sharp corners left and right and used a round over bit to round off all the other corners. A piece of plywood was screwed on the back side and trimmed off with an edge trim router bit. So next I wanted to add some dark holes in the top of the front jaw, but I wasn't sure this would work well because of the softer wood. So before drilling anything I did a test on some scrap wood and I clamped a great amount of force onto one of the bench dogs. And I was actually quite impressed how well this worked, so after that I drilled three dog holes in the top of the front jaw. And with the front jaw finished, it's time to install the vise on the bench. And I start by removing the retaining ring with a screwdriver. And then we need to dismantle the base plate from the guide rods. Next, those guide rods need to be guided through the holes of the front jaw. This will be a tight fit, so you carefully need to wiggle things in place here.
At this time a spacer block should be installed below the work surface if necessary. Then you do the exact same thing by guiding the rods through the workbench. And here you can see I screwed in a spacer block made from plywood. I made sure none of these screws would interfere with the bolts for the iron base plate. And speaking of the base plate, that one is next up. Standing by for contact and capture. Contact, docking confirmed. Houston, we think we're ready for step four. The retaining ring was put back on. And then I pre-drilled the screw holes for the base plates. And screwed in five bolts. For the bolts I used 8mm lag screws with a washer. Three for the front plate and five for the base plate. And I always like to add some sort of candle wax to the tip of the lag screws because it makes them go in much smoother. Then the face plate gets screwed on too. And with the vise installed, we just need to add a handle. You could buy one, but if you have a lathe, you can of course make it yourself. And in fact, that piece of cracked beech wood turned out to be perfect for making a handle. So only a small cut was needed to prepare it for the lathe. At the moment, I'm still setting up my shop, so actually, I had to go over to my parents' house and pick up my old wood lathe from the basement. I did a lot of wood turning on this lathe in college, but after about 10 years in the basement, the bed had a bit too much rust on it to work properly. So I used a wire reel on an angle grinder to clean it up a bit. And then I could finally start wood turning. I shaped a block of wood roughly to a cylinder using a spindle roughing gouge. I sort of knew what I wanted in my head, but the final shape was designed on the lathe itself. I wanted something smooth to hold without any hard lines in it. In the end I switched to a sanding disc and then I cleaned up the ends of the handle that I couldn't reach between the centers. The two parts that make up the handle were then separated. Now I had to add a 20mm hole to match the tent. The Forstner bit had a hard time drilling into the end grain, so in the end the fit was a bit loose, but I was able to fix that with a coat of varnish. I used a brush to apply about 3 coats of satin varnish. And I added an extra dowel with some wood glue. And then mixed some epoxy for the final glue up.
and then I matched the grain and clamped it for about 20 minutes. And for the sake of this video, I measured up the finished handle and made a drawing for those of you who are interested. So previously I had a three dog holes in the front jaw, but to make them useful I still need to drill some dog holes into the bench top. Just for now I'll keep it to a bare minimum, three holes at 100mm or about 4 inch from the edge. I can always add more later on. And I used my chamfer router bit again to chamfer the edges of the holes. And in case you're still wondering, how those bench dogs work? The idea is simple, it's just to clamp the wood in such a way that you can work on the surface without having any clamps in the way. And this works great not only for hand tools, but power tools as well. In my setup, the fully extended front jaw gives me a maximum distance of 23.5cm or about 9.2 inch. Between the bench dogs I get about 34.5cm or about 13.5 inch. And in the extended position the jaw can be used to support larger panels too. So many thanks for watching, feel free to leave a comment or like the video and have a nice day.